Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we have a very exciting video which I've been wanting to do for literally years and it is on the Erin fragrances from Estelle Lauder. I have managed to get one of their new sample boxes which have literally just appeared I guess for Christmas and I've been wanting to do a video on the range for so long but because they're quite pricey if I were to buy them all it would cost over a thousand pounds and as much as I love you guys I don't love you guys that much <laughs> so I've been wanting one of these for ages but they've had loads of different ones in the past they all nowhere seemed to be selling them and finally one has appeared so I bought it literally immediately I literally drove into town and got it straight away the moment I knew it existed so I'm going to be taking you through some of the cool fragrances in their range and let you know what they smell like I also have a detailed article on my website which goes through every perfume they've made and lets you know the difference between them and all the beautiful images are on there as well so do check that out I'll put the link in the description along with where you can buy all the ones that I'm going to talk about but if you are new here then hello and welcome I have hundreds of videos just like this going through ranges particular types of perfumes so do check them out and if you're regular do check whether you're subscribed I really appreciate your support turn on notifications and sign up to my newsletter in the link down below. So the air and fragrances aren't available in every shop, they're not as widely available as the normal Estee Lauder fragrances. So Erin the brand is founded by Erin Lauder, who is of course from the Lauder family. I believe she is a billionaireess, and they of course have all their classic Estee Lauder fragrances, but this separate range, Erin, features her in the branding, and you know, the bottles and everything are totally different, and they don't say Estee Lauder, they just say Erin. And they do lots of home products, candles, as well as body lotions and stuff as well. And the idea is that it's inspired by her lifestyle. So all the different perfumes, a lot of them have, evoke um, different places in the world. I guess she travels a lot. Um, a lot of beautiful Mediterranean scents, which I really love, and tropical scents. So here in the sample pack, which cost £25, I think it's $30 in America, you get seven fragrances. Amber Musk, Lilac Path, Aegean Blossom, Mediterranean Honeysuckle, Ica Jasmine, Evening Rose, and Wild Geranium. Um, but I actually want to start with my favourite, which is Hibiscus Palm. So this is a perfume I've been wanting to buy for about two years, I think. Uh, if you're a regular here, or you've been watching a long time, you might recall me talking about it a lot in the past. It's so beautiful. Whenever I see it in a department store, I always get it and spray it on. And actually, when I went to get this, I sprayed on the sample of hibiscus palm on my coat and just loving it. Later on in the day, I went to the Apple store and one of the staff actually stopped me and said, you smell amazing, you know, what are you wearing? That's the most beautiful smell. And it was that hibiscus palm and it literally was still on my coat the next day so I think some of the more lighter fragrances from Erin aren't that strong but hibiscus palm is. I love hibiscus it's a beautiful tropical flower and this fragrance is just everything about the tropics that that, that smell of you know walking off an aeroplane in the Caribbean or you know being somewhere tropical there's a very unique smell in the air of of all the vegetation there so you've got frangipani You've got a palm leaf fragrance note. You've got a um, tropical flower, white flower, like a magnolia in there. A fresh lotus, of course, plenty of hibiscus. But then you also have a good amount of coconut. And it really is the coconut, I think, that gives this the projection and the lasting power. If you are a fan of things like Bronze Goddess from Estelle Lauder, or, you know, more musky coconuts like Arena Grande Cloud, I definitely think you should try this one out because it is just like that perfect, warm long-lasting coconut but with all these beautiful tropical notes I think I really should just buy this perfume and I'm gonna see maybe Black Friday or something I'll be able to get it 
at a really good price and that could be my Christmas present to myself. So yeah, my number one favourite is definitely Hibiscus Palm. I also want to mention Fleur de Peony, which came out really recently from them. Um, I've also tried this a few times. I was super excited for this because I'm a huge peony fan. Um, it definitely smells of peonies for sure, but for me the lasting power on this wasn't amazing. So even though it has the peony in, it's actually more of a, a sort of fresh, fresh scent. So you have a grapefruit pomelo, you have a lychee, you have a mandarin orange, and actually some ambroxan in the base. So personally, I think the branding with all those peony flowers are a bit misleading because actually I would have marketed this as um, you know, with the pomelo, I maybe I call it like fleur de pomelo or something. It's it's fresh, it's zesty, it's pretty, and then you've got that um, ambroxan supporting the peony scent underneath. So it's still it's a lovely fragrance. And if you love peony scents like um, Misty Or Blooming Bouquet or Versace Bright Crystal, I'm sure you'll like this. But I found it faded pretty quickly, and it didn't have that projection, lasting power, you know, no one has ever commented when I have been wearing this and I have tried it quite a few times now and worn it. So it's definitely a beautiful smell, but not, you know, for that price, I think you'd have to love it. Perhaps the body products, if you love Peony, the body products are really good quality, so that could be nice. So let's get into the sample path. So I'm gonna start with Wild Geranium, which is one that they publicize quite a lot. Definitely one of their signature scents. So for me, this is a very classic English floral, English country garden scent. I definitely get the geranium. Geraniums are something that are grown in lots of gardens. I think we had them in my garden growing up, so it definitely reminds me of that English garden smell. There is a rose in here. There's a narcissus flower, orange blossom peony. It's basically like a bouquet of English country garden flowers. Uh, even some tuberose, I think. And even though it says wild geranium, usually if something's called like wild, I think, oh, are they gonna put like green notes in, like as if you're in a meadow? It's not really like that, no. It is a pure floral scent, I'd say. Again, it has that ambroxan um, note in the base, which isn't distinctively there, but it does, it's a fragrance note which helps give a perfume a creamy scent um, and quite a classy feel, and it also helps it last. So this one, Wild Geranium, I'd put somewhere, I'd say like medium longevity. It's not as light as Fleur de Peony, but it's not as good for lasting as Hibiscus Palm. For someone that wants a pretty everyday floral scent, um, sort of northern hemisphere scent, not tropical at all. Um, very classy, very pretty, um, good for spring summer. So next we have Mediterranean Honeysuckle. So this is quite a fresh, simple orange and lemon scent with that honeysuckle and some lily of the valley underneath. So it does have some similar vibes to the wild geranium in the fact that it's uh, a light floral, but you do definitely get the orange and the lemon, especially at the beginning. And then it fades and you get the jasmine in here that works with the honeysuckle, gardenia, and of course that lily of the valley, which is quite a strong scent. I'd say the lasting power from this is slightly less than wild geranium, so closer more to fleur de peony because lemons and oranges are not strong fragrances. And this one doesn't have that ambroxan ingredient in the base, which helps it last. It doesn't have that creaminess either. Personally, I would say this is for like really hot, humid weather, daytime in the summer, when you want something really pretty and classy, but very light and feminine. She recently brought out a flanker version of this, Mediterranean Honeysuckle in Bloom, which was very similar. It had grapefruit instead of lemon um, and bergamot instead of orange. So it was even fresher, even sharper, more lemony. I definitely preferred it to the original one, um, but it was temporary limited edition and difficult to find now. It had some honey in the base, which was nice, gave it a bit of a warm, cozy vibe. Um, so I thought it was a better mixture of scents with that honeysuckle. It didn't have Lily as a Valley in either, which I'm not a fan of. Um, but yeah, that's gone now. So next we have Lilac Path. This came out mm, a year or two ago. So Lilac is a scent which is 
um, something that I've seen in the comments you guys asking me about a fair bit over the years you know what perfumes have a lilac in when the lilac blooms in the spring you get that smell and I think a lot of people say oh I wish I had a perfume that smelled like this and there aren't really that many lilac perfumes this is definitely one of the best lilac perfumes for lilac lovers it is all about the lilac it has some angelica in here supporting that lilac note some jasmine some honeysuckle so again it's very sort of british springtime floral garden scent it's definitely stronger than some of the ones we've talked about before um lilac and this particularly angelica are quite strong when they're used in perfumes so it feels very classic i can imagine you know someone from the british royal family wearing this you know the queen or kate middleton has a bit of a sort of florist vibe to it quite a heavy floral if that makes sense it's not a fresh floral it's a strong flower 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 scent um but if you love lilac i think you'll definitely love this and it would be worth the price and of course those body products as well even harder to find lilac body products and um, so great and candle and everything if you're a lilac lover you should just get it all <laughs> So next we have iCat Jasmine. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I-K-A-T. So iCat Jasmine definitely has jasmine in, but it also has tuberose in. So I wouldn't say this was a you know, pure jasmine perfume like Mugler's Alien. There's also honeysuckle in here as well. So it feels more just like a white floral scent. This one is more towards the stronger side of things. It's not heavy, um, but it does perform like an eau de parfum. It's, I'd say it's one of the more um, boring ones from the range, personally, because it's just, there are so many jasmine, tuberose, white floral perfumes out there. It doesn't have anything special or different compared to, you know, something like an Armani My Way. So yeah this one i'm just don't know what more to say really it's just a pleasant white floral next we have aegean blossom so aegean is of course a sea just off the mediterranean near greece this one has really beautiful branding beautiful pictures and this is definitely something that i would take on holiday to a Greek island when it's 40 degrees outside. It really is very, very refreshing. You've got Verbena, Bergamot, Orange, Neroli, African Orange Flower. It's all these citrus and floral notes. And then a Jasmine helping them have some body, even a hint of vetiver giving a greenness to those citrus notes. So it really does feel like walking in a citrus tea tree, I don't know, field what would it be? Just loads of citrus trees in the Mediterranean and um, you know just smelling the freshly grown lemons and oranges. It's that type of vibe, you know, definitely for hot weather when you want something super refreshing. What I quite like about this is as it settles, the lemoniness stays. Often citrus notes fade quite quickly, but here becomes like a lemon zest, you know, like the rind of a lemon. It, that still stays, and I think that's coming from the new rolly ingredient and the African orange flower. So if you're looking for something that lasts that's citrusy, this is a good one, definitely. And it's not as light as some of the others. I've put, again, this more in the medium category. You know, give it a good few sprays, use the body lotion, and you'll smell of lemons for many hours, um, perfect for hot weather. So next we have Evening Rose. So this one is definitely an evening scent to me. Um, absolutely rose is the main note, but this is not a fresh rose. This is one that is quite difficult to all these fresh holiday type vacation perfumes we've had. This is more um, a sensual evening date night scent which you could wear any time of year i'd say more nighttime than daytime though um perhaps daytime during the winter and it is an oriental rose so you've got incense in here you've got ambery undertone and you've actually got a cognac with a black currant so you even get the smell of you know, liqueur of alcohol as if you're out in a bar. So it feels to me very much that kind of evening vibe. And um, it smells very expensive. It smells really high end. Um, there are so many rose oriental perfumes out there now. Um, and this is definitely, you know, one of the good ones in terms of it lasting and smelling classy, but it's also not too heavy. 
Sometimes perfumes with incense can just be such a strong oriental sense. They can become a bit sickening. I think this keeps it quite classy, um, but definitely one for someone who likes incense, oriental scents. Lastly, we have Amber Musk. So Amber Musk is definitely towards the stronger end. Again, it's more, um, it's definitely very strong and good for lasting. Again, it has that coconut ingredient from hibiscus palm and whatever coconut they use, it, it is good for lasting in the air and range. But it has a benzoin, so like a amberiness to it and a good amount of the ambroxan. So it feels like a sweet, creamy vanilla coconut doesn't feel tropical at all it feels warm sensual there's a sandalwood in there you really get the creamy creamy ambroxan um i think you could wear this probably any time of day maybe not in super humid weather but it would be okay in moderate warm weather but definitely in colder weather because it's just one of those super comforting cozy scents and broxen is meant to smell like what skin would smell like if it had a smell or something and it is that creamy human sensual comforting scent it feels like a real hug like a cashmere jumper or something so it feels classy it feels expensive and it's strong and good for lasting as well. And the bottle's quite cute. So guys, those are all the ones that um, are in the discovery box. I know there aren't more, and if more discovery boxes or something appears, I will try and get those to review for you. And I'll leave a link to this discovery box down below because I'm sure it will sell out and then there won't be another one for ages. Um, as well as links to the actual products and the body lotions and stuff as well. And also this time of year, I noticed they do some beautiful gift sets with really nice bags and stuff. So I'll leave a link to them as well in the description box but guys that is it so let me know what you think of Erin which is your favorite which other ones would you like me to review let me know in the comments do read all your comments but that's it so thank you so much for watching as always guys and I will see you in the next video bye